Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we are going through the basics of medication administration. So I know when I first started paramedic school, one of the things that I was really afraid about was medication administration, calculating the right doses, how to draw up from vials, uh, knowing my pharmacology in general. So this week's video, I wanna go through some of the basics of medication administration, talking about some of the routes of administration, going to the six or eight patient rights, and then talking about some of the calculations to draw up from a vial and the procedure for drawing up from a vial. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing we have to talk about today is going to be the different routes of administration. And this is something that's really important to understand. Now, I'm not going through every route that is available uh, in nursing or in the hospital. I'm just gonna be talking about the routes that are most utilized by paramedics and EMTs in the pre-hospital environment. So these routes consist of oral, which is obviously taking something by mouth. Uh, you have buccal, which is between the cheek and the gum. We do this with uh, glucose most of the time. Sublingual, which is actually under the tongue, which is where we administer sprays or tabs of nitroglycerin. And then you have IM, which is intermuscular. IN, which is internasal. So that's what this MAD device is for. It's for misting up into the nose. Uh, then we have IV, which is intervenous, and then we have IO, which is interosseous into the bone. There's also subcutaneous, which is how we used to give epinephrine uh, pre-hospitally. However, that's kind of fallen out of favor, and right now we don't carry any meds that we give uh, subcutaneous. It is all IM injection. So before we even consider giving a medication, we have to go through and understand in depth the six patient rights. Now, if you Google patient rights of medication administration, you're gonna find all sorts of things on there. There's five patient rights, six patient rights, eight patient rights, 10 patient rights. There are a lot of different kind of schools of thought on this. I'm gonna go through kind of the eight most common that you'll see. Uh, and you'll kind of notice that in the pre-hospital environment, not all of these actually make sense to us. A lot of these are for nursing or in hospital or even home care use. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about that as we go. So your six patient rights, you have right patient, right route, right dose, right drug, right time, right documentation, right reason, and right response. So this is to keep us safe. Uh, medication errors actually account for a lot of deaths across the US within healthcare. So it's really important that we are triple checking our medications before we're administering them to patients. Now, right patient, this is not super applicable to the pre-hospital environment because generally if we're giving medications, we have one patient in the back of the ambulance, I'm not gonna be eyeing up my partner getting ready to give them a medication administration. So right patient, if we do have multiple patients, we need to make sure that we are going into the right room. If you are working in a hospital, we're giving this to the patient it was actually meant for. Now, right route, uh, this is super important because we have some medications like epinephrine that can be given IV or IM. Now, those two different routes are two different concentrations of the epinephrine, even though it's the same drug. So we need to make sure that we are giving it the right route in this situation. Now, finally, right drug. Right drug, obviously, we need to make sure we're giving the right medication to the patient. Now, in front of you, you'll see I have a bunch of different vials of medications. And you're gonna notice that there are actually some duplicates here. So these two are both diphenhydramine, so that um, is going to be your Benadryl, but they look completely different. Now, you can have two medications that look very similar even though they're completely different. So making sure that we are drawing up the right medication for these patients, pulling out the right thing, even if you have like a Pyxis or some kind of lock that has a fail safe on it, that is no guarantee you are going to be getting the right med. It might've been stocked wrong. So I always triple check my medications as I'm going down the line, uh, right before, right when I draw it, as I'm drawing it up, and then right before I give it to the patient, I'm looking at the vial, making sure it is the right thing and going through that. 
Now, right dose. Right dose is super important. We have a lot of different meds. We need to make sure that we are not just committing everything to memory. We are also looking things up if we are ever unsure of anything. Uh, right now on the helicopter, the standard practice is to look up every med and confirm it with somebody else for dose every single time, even if you think you know it, just to triple check and make sure you're not overdosing or underdosing a patient. Uh, right time does not apply to us so much in the pre-hospital environment. Um, sometimes you could look at it in like an ACLS cardiac arrest. You know, we're giving the epinephrine uh, every three to five minutes. Are we giving it too late? Are we giving it too early? Just make sure that this is the appropriate time to give the medication. Now, the next three, I think, apply a little bit less to us. Right documentation, making sure that we are recording the right things afterwards, that we have the right paperwork signed, uh, so that when we drop that patient off at the hospital, we're not scrambling trying to get you know the ID number off the vial or whatever your service requires. Now, right reason, is this the patient that uh, we really need to be giving this med for? What's the rationale behind it is a thought there. This is very applicable to like a direct order medication, a physician orders medication. You need to make sure that, uh, kind of double check their work and make sure that this medication is be being given to the patient um, for the right reasons and we're not treating the wrong thing. And then finally, right response. Um, with all of these medications, we should be seeing a very uh, specific effect. We're giving it for a reason. Now, some things like your antibiotics or you know, even some of your anti-emetics, you might not see a super big response right away, but we have to make sure we're looking out for adverse reactions um, or some off-label effects and treating them accordingly. Now that we've gone through the eight patient rights, I wanna start talking about some really simple conversions before we go further that you kind of have to understand to really get the hang of medication administration and dosing correctly. So when we're talking about medications, medications are dosed in a variety of different ways. So we have micrograms, we have milligrams, uh, and then we have grams of medications. And there are more, but those are kind of the normal three we're giving. And then if it's in liquid form or if it's like a saline solution, we're actually giving a volume. So that would be your milliliters or your liters. So in this, a microgram, 1000 micrograms equals one milligram, 1000 milligrams equals one gram. Same with milliliters, 1000 milliliters equals one liter. So that's important to understand. Now this isn't such a big deal in what we're talking about today, but the other conversion you have to know is that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Most medications are dosed milligrams per kilograms or micrograms per kilogram. So keep that in the back of your head. Also really handy if you lift weights. So now we have taken the vial out of our drug bag or out of the Pixis, whatever it is. We've confirmed our six patient rights the first time. We know our dose. So in this case, we're going to be giving a patient diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl. And in this vial, there are 50 milligrams per ml. We are ordered, or our service is going to give 25 milligrams of Benadryl IV in this case. And we have to understand how to draw that up from this file. Now that is a pretty easy uh, mental math uh, scenario here, but not all medications are that way. So we have to understand what the formula is to actually determine how many milliliters we are going to draw from this file. When we are giving this medication, like I said, we need to know what the formula is to give it. On the front of this, this has some really important information. So on the front, we have the concentration. So this has 50 milligrams per one ml. And total in this, this is a one ml vial. So we can surmise that there's one milliliter of fluid in here. And in that one milliliter, we have 50 milligrams diluted in that of the diphenhydramine. So the formula we have to know is desired dose, so we are ordered to give 25 milligrams, that's our desired dose, multiplied by your volume. So your total volume in here, which is one milliliter, and then it's going to be divided by the dose on hand, so that's 50 milligrams. So in this case, this is going to be 25 milligrams multiplied by one ml divided by 50 milligrams. Now, you can probably do this in your head. This is going to be 0.5 mLs to draw this out of this file. Pretty simple math, but once again, it can get more complicated. You'll notice that all of these are labeled the same, uh, so you'll have the same information on everything. So this is magnesium sulfate. Um, so in this, it has two milliliters single dose vial, 
and in this you have one gram per two mls. So total in this we have one gram. And it also tells you under that it says 500 uh, milligrams per milliliter. So it gives you all the information you need to uh, do this dose calculation. So the procedure for actually drawing up a medication is relatively simple, uh, but we're gonna go through it kind of step by step. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, take the correct syringe. Now I like getting the syringe that is closest to the volume we're drawing up. Now I know in here it's got a maximum of one milliliter. We're only drawing 0.5 milliliters out of it. I'm gonna select a one ml syringe. If it was something like Zofran where I've got uh, two mLs I'm drawing up and I'm giving the full uh, dose of that, I'd probably take a three mL. And then obviously as you get the bigger vials, you can have the five, 10, uh, even 50 mL syringes. But for this one, we're taking a one mL syringe. We're gonna open this up. And I like keeping the tip in the wrapper as long as possible because if we take it out, it's prone to contaminants. Now we can choose what we're going to use to actually stick the vial. You can use a traditional needle that's going to go on to the syringe, stick it in the vial. For safety reasons, I like using blunt tips a lot better. So blunt tips are something that won't actually stab you or puncture your skin. You don't get an inadvertent stick, but they still allow you to puncture the vial itself. So we're gonna pull this guy out of here. We are going to connect it uh, to the blunt tip and we have that ready to go. We can set that here. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to reconfirm our patient rights. We're gonna go through all eight, uh, just make sure we're giving the right medication. I just stare at this, make sure I understand everything about it. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna pop the cap of that. These just pop right off, you can flick them off. Different medications have different procedures for giving them. Solumedrol has a push top you have to reconstitute. Same with glucagon, you have to put something in it. For this one, we are just talking about a vial with fluid. So. The traditional way is to take this and we're gonna swab off the cap of that with a piece of um, alcohol gauze, something to sterilize it. The traditional way to do this is you pick this up, you take your needle and you stick it in like this. That's okay in a hospital, but it is not the safest route, especially in an aircraft or an ambulance where you're bouncing up and down, you might hit turbulence, you don't wanna stab yourself with the needle. So what I like to do is I actually like to keep it on a surface in front of me. Obviously, I can't always do that, but this is kind of the best method that I've found. We're going to take the cap of this off, and we know we're drawing at 0.5 ml, so I'm gonna to aspirate to 0.5 on this. I'm going to take this right in the center, and you just puncture down. Now that you're in, it's safe. If this was a needle, it would be capped. I'm gonna pull this up like so, and I'm just gonna remove the needle so it's down in the fluid completely. Now I'm going to inject the 0.5 mLs of air. If we don't do that, then it doesn't withdraw easily and um, we're creating a vacuum. You can't get the medication out. And now I'm going to just start withdrawing this plunger in the fluid all the way to the 0.5 mLs. And I draw a little bit more because you inevitably have a little bit of an air bubble at the top. I'm going to take this. Now, my personal practice is I keep the needle in the vial if I'm not going to use the rest of the medication because that just keeps the needles capped. And if it's not a controlled substance, then I'd take this and I'd put it right in the sharps. Um, if it is a controlled substance, then we might have to have a little bit more of a procedure for it. So I have this, I'm going to get some of the air bubbles out of it, and I'm going to just make sure that plunger is sitting right at the 0.5 uh, mLs and there's no air in the syringe. There might be a very small bubble that's not a huge deal, it's relatively normal. So now I have the correct dose drawn up. 
In some cases, especially like with pain medications, it might be something you're redosing. The best practice to avoid a potential medication error is to only withdraw what you absolutely need in the syringe and then you, you know you are giving the entire syringe when you are giving it to the patient. Some cases that isn't done, just know that is uh, not the best practice when it comes to medication safety. So now I have this drawn up. We have the vial if we didn't put it in the sharps container and I'm going to do one last check. I'm gonna check I've got the right dose drawn up in here. I've got the right medication, it's diphenhydramine. I know I'm giving it to this patient here and it's for an allergic reaction. We're giving it IV. I know I could give this IM, but in this case our protocols say IV. Um, and then we're going to take this and we are going to connect it, either give it the IM if we are wanting to do it, never use the same needle that you drew up with to give an IM injection, switch the needles. Uh, if it's IV, we disconnect that completely, hook it up to the IV, and then we have to know how fast we're giving it. One thing to consider is that you should never draw up a medication and then hand that to your partner and have them give it. Same thing is you should never take that syringe from somebody and give it willingly. That is setting yourself up for failure. You are ultimately responsible for what goes into the patient, so you don't wanna be relying on what somebody else drew up. If you are gonna hand a medication to somebody else, you also show them the vial right next to it and they will do the six patient rights right there in front of you. What I like doing is I actually like taking the vial and I tape it around the syringe with some clear tape, some clear medical tape, and then it's right there ready to go. And somebody can pick that up, read it, confirm that's what's in the syringe and go from there. Guys, this is a pretty broad, complicated topic and I just talked about a very small portion of it. In future videos, I really wanna go over calculating drips, uh, how you're pushing something through an IV, IM injections, IO. Uh, I do have an IO instructional video with the SAM IO device that I hope to be releasing relatively soon. That is all I have for this video, guys. Remember that this is not official training. This is not authorizing you to do anything. Uh, this is just for your general information. If you're in school studying for nursing EMS, just something to kind of refresh your memory. Always refer to your local protocols and procedures for how you are doing this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.